Welcome back everybody to the Dinosaur Diaries. I'm your host, Super King Ghidorah, better known as SKG, and we'll be going over a fairly well-known dinosaur today. And I would also like to invite you to my joint Discord with other YouTubers like The Knight of Green, Deck Tunix Inc., Seabass, Dino Diego, Lord Baryonyx, and more. You will find the link in both, of this, in both in the description and pinned in the comments down below. Now, without further ado, we'll proceed with today's subject of... Uh, today's top subject of topic, or is it topic of subject? Either or. Today we'll be talking, and co talking about and covering Euplocephalus tutus. <laughs> tutus. Okay, so before we get into this, I just want to know, how do you all prefer to pronounce this animal's name? Do you say Euplocephalus or Euoplocephalus? I more commonly myself like to say Euoplocephalus, but I've been known to shift, you know, between the pronunciations from time to time, as you may hear from here, on here. Now, continuing forward, the name Euplocephalus <clears throat> means well-armored head. Its diet was herbivorous. Obviously, as you can see from the other surrounding species. It had a length of 5.5 meters or around 18 feet. It weighed about 2.8 tons, which is 5,500 pounds roughly. Now for the Jurassic Park's um, sake, it could only be found on Isla Nublar and Isla Sorna. But in real life, it was found in North America. Birth type was A and it had a novel appearance only in the first Jurassic Park novel. Its notable game appearances would be The Lost World Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park 3 Park Builder, Jurassic Park Builder, Jurassic World The Game, Jurassic World Alive, and of course this title, Jurassic World Evolution. It had a toy uh, line called Jurassic Park Chaos Effect, but it was cut from it. <clears throat> Euplocephalus was an ankylosaurid dinosaur from the mid late Cretaceous of North America. This dinosaur weighed almost three tons and had a width of two meters and was around 5.5 meters long. Euplocephalus was equipped with fused bone plates on its back that acted as body armor as well as a pair of horns that protruded from the back of the neck, possibly as a defense against being grabbed by the neck. For defense, Euplocephalus was armed with a foot-wide tail club that could be swung like a medieval flail <clears throat> and had the ability to break bone. In addition, Euplocephalus also supported a pair of armored eyelids like Ankylosaurus. Now, in the movies, Euplocephalus had 9% of its total genome completed during construction of the original park, implying that it was planned to be an attraction sometime in the future. It is known that Euplocephalus was subject to cruelty at some time in the past, although it is unknown if there are any surviving populations remaining. In the novels, Euplocephalus was successfully created by engine on Isla Sona for Jurassic Park on Isla Nublar. It is assumed they lived in the Triceratops territory with Triceratops and possibly Staracosaurus. By August 16, 1989, there were 16 Euplocephalus living in the park and they were version 4.0. By the end of the engine incident, there were only 9 that survived. The ones that did not most likely 
being killed by the escaped Tyrannosaurs and Velociraptors. Ultimately, the surviving Euplocephalus were all killed by the Costa Rica napalm bombing that followed after the incident. It is unknown if there were ever any populations that survived on Isla Sorna. <clears throat> now, in the Lost World Jurassic Park, this is um, the gaming section for Euplocephalus. It is said to appear in the PlayStation slash Sega Saturn game, The Lost World Jurassic Park, as the final boss in the series of the Velociraptor levels, which was an interesting um, level for me because the way you fought it with the Velociraptor, is it, it showcased the Velociraptor to have like Herculean strength, being able to flip over the Euplocephalus onto his back so you can actually attack it and heavily injure it. <clears throat> Now, in this game, though, the Euplocephalus has three attacks, a charging attack, a lunging gore, and a tail swipe. In addition to jumping on to the Euplocephalus, it will cause you to it will cause you damage due to the horns on the back. To defeat the Euplocephalus, you need to pounce on his head and lift the animal onto his side where you can then attack the dinosaur's belly. And you got titles like Jurassic Park 3 Park Builder where it just says that Euplocephalus can be created in the game. But for Jurassic Park Builder, you get just a teeny bit more saying that Euplocephalus can be created in this game. It was at first only purchasable in real world money. Or with real world money as it should say. Since September 3rd, 30th of 2016, it became a DNA tournament limited edition creature. Now for Jurassic World the game, Euplocephalus can be created in, you know, this title. It is a super rare herbivore, and since September 30th of 2015, a fully maxed Euplocephalus could be mixed with a fully maxed Giganotosaurus to make the hybrid Giganocephalus. You know, I don't think I ever really used their hybrid. I, I know I got it, but I don't think I ever really, like, put it to use. But it was good for the, like the early game. <clears throat> now, in Jurassic World Alive, your Procephalus appears as many of the as one of the many collectible dinosaurs in the game. Two Euplocephalus also appear as skeletons on the banner of the Lockwood Library Arena. Then you have Jurassic World Evolution. Which says Euplocephalus is included in Jurassic World Evolution's Claire Sanctuary DLC that was released on June 18th of 2019. And then you got Jurassic Park The Chaos Effect, which was the toy line, saying that a genetically advanced Euplocephalus was planned for the toy line, but it was scrapped. And unfortunately, the creature doesn't have any trivia highlighting is into any development that might have been gone into the planning for the species, any you no know, behind the scenes, nothing of that. But you Euplocephalus, while the while lacking movie appearances, has maintained a healthy, you know, game appearance. And like other dinosaurs before it that had, did not have, you know, film appearances like Acrocanthosaurus, but had, but, you know, notable game appearances. It is a welcome addition to the uh, franchise. And one I hope we get to see in any future video game titles and hopefully movie sequels. You know, wink, wink, looking at you, Dominion. But this has been the Dinosaur Diaries for Euplocephalus. And I hope to be seeing you in the next one to be coming soon. Later.